Hello you two and welcome to our next maths lesson. So today is going to be our first lesson on division and I wanted to share with you what the upcoming steps are. So today we're going to be thinking about making equal groups by sharing. Tomorrow we're going to move on to making equal groups by grouping and on Thursday we're going to begin dividing by two. And then later on, so next week, we will look at odd and even numbers dividing by five and dividing by 10. So as I've just shared, the learning objective today is make equal groups by sharing. So please pause the video here and write the dates 26.1 to 21 and the learning objective. Well done. OK, so let's have a look at our steps to success. The first thing we need to do today is identify the whole amount. So sometimes that might be finding the total of how many objects altogether, or it might be identifying the whole amount which is written as a number. The next thing we need to do is identify how many equal groups you are sharing between, then find how many objects are in each group once you've done the sharing. And then lastly, write the division using the symbol correctly. Although you might begin with writing the division for example, on step two and step three, before showing your workings out underneath. So here you can see the division symbol. And very similar to how we would use any other symbol in maths, we would put the symbol in one square in our maths book. So first of all, in our review phase, we're gonna cast our memories back to when we were thinking about groups being equal or not equal. So we're having a think about whether there is the same amount inside each equal group. So we've got three questions here of which are all the same. Are the groups equal or not equal? So please pause the video here and discuss what you think. Brilliant, well done you two. So let's have a look together. Let's have a look at the fish. So I can see that there are three groups with four fish inside each group. So the groups are equal as there is the same amount inside each group. For number two, I notice that the groups are not equal as there are only three cubes in this first group, whereas there are four cubes in the second, third and fourth group. So they're not equal. When we have a look at our arrays, I notice that the groups are equal as the whole amount is the same for each array, as this first array shows two times three equals six. The second array shows three times two equals six, showing that it is commutative. And the last array shows one times six equals six. So the groups are equal. Okay, so moving on to explore, Ron is sharing out the strawberries. How many strawberries will each child get? So we have some STEM sentences to help us with thinking about our steps to success today. So first we need to find the whole amount of strawberries. You may choose to count one strawberry at a time, or you may look at the strawberries like an array and recognize that there are two rows of six, two times six. Well done you two. So should we answer that sentence together? There are 12 strawberries, brilliant. Okay, so how many children can you see? This is our number of groups we're sharing between. Brilliant, should we say it together? There are three children. Well done. Okay, so to find out how many strawberries each child will get, we need to share the whole amount between our equal groups. So if you were doing this in your book, so when we come on to the independent learning later, please represent the objects as counters, just like when drawing arrays, and cross out one counter at a time to share into an equal group, which will look like a circle in your books, just like when we do big maths. So I'm going to um, model that to you. And I'm gonna cross out one strawberry at a time and put it in the equal group, making sure I'm taking turns to share between each child. Okay, as I'm doing this, I wonder if you can have a think, how many strawberries do you think each child will get? Yeah, 
Brilliant. Well done, you two. So there's three strawberries left and there's three children. So how many strawberries will each child get? Brilliant. Should we say it together? Each child will get four strawberries. Well done. Fantastic, year two. Okay, so Ron is back with his strawberries, except from this time, I notice he's got another friend along with him. So how many strawberries will each child get now? I wonder if you can pause the video here and have a think. How many strawberries are there all together? How many children are there? And share out the strawberries to find out how many strawberries each child will get. Well done, you two. Super thinking. So we can see that there are 12 strawberries and there are four children. And we need to share out the strawberries to find out how many each child will get. So again, I'm going to take turns in crossing out the strawberries to share them out equally. What do you notice is the same about this question in comparison to the last one? And what do you notice is different? Well done, the whole is the same. There are 12 strawberries. What's different is the number of children. What else do you notice is different? Well done, the number of strawberries each child will get because you've had to share between more children this time, meaning each child has a smaller amount. So how many strawberries will each child get? Should we answer using the sentence together? Each child will get three strawberries. Well done, you two. Okay, we've got another question with some strawberries again. The same whole amount, okay? So I've given you a clue there. I'd like you to pause the video and have a think. How many strawberries are there? How many children are there? And how many strawberries will they each get? You may find this time that there's some left over. So please pause the video here and talk about this question or have a go. Brilliant, okay, should we say the stem sentences together? There are 12 strawberries. There are five children. Really, now we need to find out how many strawberries they'll each get. So again, I'm going to cross them out one at a time. And put one strawberry inside each group, taking turns. Let's see, I wonder if we'll be able to make equal groups. As we're sharing between five. When I count in my fives, I don't say the number 12. So five isn't a multiple of 12. Oh, that bit of a sticky point here too. I've shared them out equally so far. So there's two strawberries in each group. There's two left over. So I'm not sure what to do. As if I was to carry on sharing them, these two children would have three, whereas these three children would only have two each. So how many strawberries will each child get if we make sure the groups are equal? Should we say it together? Each child will get two strawberries. So how many strawberries are left over? Brilliant, say it together. There are two strawberries left over. Well done. So what do you notice is the same? And what do you notice is different this time? Well done, so we can see that the whole amount is the same. However, the number of children, so the number of groups we're sharing between is different, meaning the amount they each get is also different. And this time there are some strawberries left over as we can't make equal groups. Well done, you two. Okay, on your screen now, you can see step one questions to solve in your book. As I've mentioned, when you come across some objects, so for example, apples on 1A, please represent them as counters in your books, one per square, and draw the equal groups as circles, okay? And I've drawn some there for you on 1A to help you. When you come onto 1B, it says take 20 cubes. 
I suggest taking 20 objects from the house. I know usually they would be the same when thinking about this concept, but don't worry if they're not, as I know we're just doing the best we can whilst we're at home. Or you may choose to draw two rows of 10 counters in your book and draw the groups to share them out. OK, so please pause the video here and have fun here too. Well done, super math year two. OK, we're going to move on to exploring um, step two together now. The question says, how can we represent this as a written calculation? And as you can see, I've got some fancy new words here to share with you, which is very exciting. These words will keep coming up, so don't worry if you find them a bit tricky to say today. So, first of all, let's have a look at the picture. We need to find the whole amount, the amount of cookies all together. How many cookies can you see all together? Well done, the whole amount is eight. And when talking about division, we call the whole amount the dividend. Let's say that together, dividend. Well done, so the dividend is eight. And the amount we divide with is the amount of equal groups that we can see. So how many equal groups can you see here two? Well done, there are two equal groups. So this number here is called the divisor. Let's say it together, divisor. Well done. And our answer in division is called the quotient. And the quotient is going to be the amount inside each equal group. So how many cookies can you see inside each equal group? Well done, there's four cookies inside each equal group. Brilliant. So let's say this division together, eight divided by two equals four. Well done, you two. Okay, we've got some more cookies and plates now. I'd like you to pause the video here and have a think about how you can represent this as a written calculation. Well done, you two. So let's begin with the whole amount. The whole amount is 20. And we can also say this as the dividend is 20. Let's say it together. The dividend is 20. Brilliant, as there are 20 cookies all together. The divisor is the amount we are dividing with. It's the amount of equal groups. And I can see that there are five equal groups. So the divisor is five. Let's say that together. The divisor is five. Well done. So that leaves us with the quotients, the amount inside each equal group. So how many cookies can you see inside each equal group? Well done. There's four cookies inside each equal group. So let's practice our fancy new word and say the quotient is together. The quotient is Four. Brilliant. Well done, you two. OK, so we've got some more divisions here before we move on to your independent learning for step two. So the first division says 30 divided by three equals mm. So 30 represents the whole amount. OK, and the three represents the number of equal groups we are sharing between. So as you can see, I've started this question here and I've shared the three tens between the three equal groups, okay? As three tens is representing the whole 30. So what is the amount inside each equal group year two? I think it might be one. Well done. So, I was thinking one because of 110, but you're right. 110 represents 10 ones. So 30 divided by three equals 10. And the way we can check this is using our multiplication. We know three times 10 equals 30. So your cats count in our tens, 10, 20, 30, brilliant. Okay, so the next question, 
So that's 30 divided by five equals mm. We're going to use the tens or the deans or the base 10, we've got a few names, to help us. But this one's a bit tricky because there's only three tens, but we're sharing between five equal groups. So what are we going to need to do here two? Well done, we're going to need to exchange our tens for ones. So if we've got three tens, how many ones could we exchange them for? Brilliant, 30 ones. So we're going to share out 30 ones and I'm going to start you off before you carry on by yourselves. Let's do the first 10 together. One, count with me, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brilliant. It's got 20 ones to go. I wonder if you could pause the video here and share out the remaining 20 ones to find the amount inside each equal group. Fantastic year two. So I'm going to share my thinking with you as well. So 20 to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Brilliant. So what is the quotient? What is the amount inside each equal group? Six. Well done, year two. Let's say that division together. 30 divided by five equals six. Well done. Okay, so on your screen now, you can see step two questions to solve in your book. So please pause the video here and solve 2A and 2B. Amazing, well done you two, I'm so proud of you. Okay, we're going to move on to exploring step three now. We've got some missing number problems. So I'm going to share with you another strategy to think about. So 50 divided by mm equals five. So I'm gonna think about how many lots of five make 50. So almost leaning on our multiplication knowledge here. So how many fives are there in 50? Well done, shall we count together in our multiples of five? It'd be great if you were able to recall that fact, but if not, let's check counting in our multiples of five. Are you ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Brilliant, there are 10 lots of five in 50. So we know the missing number is 10. Fantastic. Okay, the next division is 60 divided by 2. Divided by 2 also means to half. So I wonder what half of 60 is. You might be thinking 60, well, that's quite a big number, but we can look at the digit 6. And I'm sure you know half of 6. That will help you find half of 60 by making your quotient 10 times greater. Well done, so we know half of six is three, so half of 60 will be 30. So the quotient is 30. Brilliant, well done you two. Okay, on your screen now, you can see step three questions. So I've only written number three here, it's on the worksheet, it says A, B, C and D. So please pause the video here and complete step three. Well done year two, you have done so well today as it's a totally new concept for us. So well done for really putting in all of your effort. So as you can see here, we've got the answers which you can look at to review your learning. But well done year two, I'm really, really proud of you.